everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Wisdom of the Mystics. And it's just such a joy and honor to be here with you today with the, I can't remember which way I'm pointing, the amazing Laura Topper. As we come here, exactly, uh, twice a month on the second and fourth Tuesdays to each, for all of us to deepen and learn about the different wisdom of the mystics of new thought. And I just know that if you're here, you're guided here for your own spiritual growth and your opening and your, for you to tune into your mystical side within. And that's it. The mystical teachings are universal. And so as we learn more, we learn and grow. And it's how wonderful that is. And so I'm Reverend Kathy Mastriani with the Science Mind Archives and Library Foundation who is around to preserve, protect, and present science, mind, philosophy, and wisdom for all of us. And I'm here with the amazing Laura Topper, who's going to introduce our super guest and this week's mystic. Take it away, Laura. Oh, thank you, Reverend Kathy. Hi, it's great to be back here with you this week. And welcome everybody that's watching right now or at any point in the future. Welcome into today's wisdom of mystics and you are here with us on new thought media network as we share today on a very um i i think round mystic who who is still doing amazing work in the world and um and i was reminded this week you know that many of us enter into uh, a spiritual community or a pathway because uh we're interested in the metaphysical side of and then something happens an opening within us where um, where we can be really guided to to know more about the mysticism of how life works and this week our super guest wow reverend elzia seku who is uh who's no stranger in network he he uh, pre presents the New Thought Today program with Reverend Robert, and he's part of the Science of Conversation series on the network and uh, Ministers Talking It <laughs> also on Fridays and Senior Minister for CSL Denver, uh, who um, who's, he's doing fantastic that work here in Denver with, um, with the center that he brings to to life and brings joy into that certain community. And this week, uh, Reverend Elzia is here to present Richard Raw. Really interesting. I'm excited, Reverend Kathy. Me too. I can't wait to learn more. And I'm going to bring yeah, welcome to Wisdom of the Mystics. Welcome here, Reverend, Sa uh, Reverend Elzia. Hey, good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Uh, I'm honored to be here with uh, two of my favorite co-hosts because they, they, for me, what you guys do or what you ladies do is is this idea of the mystic um, where, where there's that cross between orthodoxy and actual practice uh, at a, at at not only a cosmic level, because most people think about mystics at a cosmic level, but I love the idea that we're looking at mysticism and some of its features at a practical level and how we put this in our everyday life and how we make it real. Uh, and, and, and in a lot of cases, uh, the mystics compel us not to just look at the roses, 
you know, sometimes we have to look at the other, the, the fertilizer, if you will, that causes the roses to grow. So, so I love that and, and I'm happy to be here. Oh, I love, I've just said it's a, this too is God expressing us. I've been saying that regularly for the last three years, over and over and over. Um, and so tell me about the mystic that you have chosen, who is still walking this earthly plane, um, Richard Raw. Um, I'm, I'm, we're really interested, I'm really interested to learn a little bit more about him as, as a pun. Who is he? What is he? What is he here doing right now? And what is he, what does he stand for? Well, you know, uh, one of the good things about Richard is he's still with us. Uh, he was born in 43 in Kansas, and he now runs a center in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is not that far from me. Uh, it's probably about a, I don't know, maybe an eight hour drive from me. Um, and he has a center there. Uh, the Center for Action and Contemplation, that is a functioning place. You can go there and see him and do some of his work. He has a website um, that you can go. He has podcasts and everything. But, you know, the good thing about Richard is that I, you know, he's a living mystic, if you will. And he comes out of the order of the Franciscans, which is uh, from St. Francis Assisi. And, uh, if you know a little bit about Frank St. Francis, St. Francis Assisi, and, and there's a lot of rumors, and I won't bring some of them up of his lineage and where he came from and so forth. So I'll 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 allow the audience to go out and do that on their own. But his order, the, the Franciscans, his order was an order of poverty, travel, and living in urban areas. Right. So that that was the basis of St. Francis Assisi, which, which was his his idea, uh, if I could kind of capsulize it, was this idea of being in the world. To 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 learn uh, um, life and spiritual practices and, and, and deeper meanings in some of the scriptures. By being in the world. And there's no better way to be in the world than through poverty and traveling and living in an urban environment because you're going to see everything and you're going to encounter everything. And so uh, that's the order that that uh, Richard is coming from. You know, and just hearing that to me, what wow. I can feel in my heart is compassion. You yeah. know, it's just a sense of compassion. It's really going into your heart and feeling each other's hearts where you, from there you can really go into oneness. I mean, I think that's where oneness comes in is when we can tap into that level of compassion. So I like them already. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting that you say that, you know, because uh, for Richard, one of the things that he uses as a teacher's teaching tool is the serenity prayer, you know, grant me the serenity to accept the things I can change and those that I can't and difference to know the you know, to know the difference between the two and everything in there is 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 a is a statement or a testimony to uh, being immersed in the oneness, knowing that there, you know, as as Ernest Holmes would say, uh, God is not divided against itself or a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I look at I look at this. Uh, serenity prayer that, that Richard uses as a teaching tool as a way of saying, you know, um, they're, they're hidden, if you will, things. They're hidden factors. And we know that to be true based on quantum physics, that there are things that we don't see that are active in our lives, that are active in the world and the universe. Um, and so we have to grant serenity to that to because Everybody don't know about quantum physics, excuse me. And if they do, they don't know how it all works. So you have to surrender to that. And uh, I, I think, you know, as we look at the expansion now of, 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 of Ernest Holmes' statement, I look forward to the day that religion and spirituality 
I mean, science and spirituality walk together. We're Spiritual. in those days right now. And so yes. it's opening up a world that is totally different. Absolutely. So he's yeah. really. Go ahead. Um, he he's he's really punctuating that it this is God expressing it is all God and and who are we to um to kind of divide it up and say this is good and this isn't good or this should be like this and this shouldn't be like that it's all yes. God and when we can accept that in our hearts we're living a different kind of experience yes. of acceptance. And and one and and Richard has a book called Things Hidden, right? Uh, and in that book, he talked. He right. looked at the biblical record of of, of human evolution. Um, which and he you know he talks about these these evolving experiences with God, and 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 it opens up the door again for us to begin to look at at God beyond the orthodoxy and beyond the doctrine. Um, because if you if you go back to the Saint Francis of Assisi's uh, uh, you know charge, if you will, it was to get out it to 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 take these principles and apply them in 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 a less than ideal situation, right? By, yeah, you know, and that's yes. that's key. So I, I've just put up here the um, the St. Francis prayer, you know, where there's hatred, let me, let me so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith. So he's, he's really acknowledging that we're living in a, an experience of polarity and we yes. can pour love into it all. Yes. And because there's, there's that, there's that, uh, I'll, I'll say it's age old adage of of the divine paradox, right? That 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 is uh, is present in all spiritual, religious, ideological, philosophical systems. And you know, we know in the ancient times, all of those were just synonyms in in a lot of ways of each other. We've now expanded them out into different areas of study, but at some point in the ancient times. Those were tangentially and, and more coupled together as the same thing. And so when we look at the hidden things, looking at, 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 at this divine paradox, you know, a thing is, it, there's the saying that goes this, without up, down has absolutely no meaning. So there's a paradox, if you will, right. of... Is there a, such a thing as up or down, right? Because they only exist in relationship to each other. And so yes. when 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 Saint Francis of Assisi in that prayer uh, prayer says, you know, give me faith, right? He's talking about somebody has told me there's this thing called up or down. I can't I can't quantify it or qualify it categorically. So I have to have faith and move in that direction. And when I do that, when I step out there, then eventually that faith will turn into a knowledge and that knowledge will turn into a knowing. And that's what that's what mystics do. And I kind of think that's what 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 uh, what Rock does in that. You know, there's the there, there's the uh, there's the, the the saying that is attributed to uh, to the Taoist movement that says. Those who say do not know, and those who know do not say. Because we know that there are hidden things, and we know that there, there, there's a matter of faith. And from quantum, we know that my faith and my acknowledgement of certain hidden things bring them into life. And so because each one of us are different, we each come to the table with a different perspective, a different set of knowledge points that reaction to the spiritual world is going to be different for each one of us. And so that's why you see mystics yes. and, and most often giving lessons in stories and parables and things like that. So that it's, it's, it's 
not categorical, that if you do exactly this, this exactly will happen. Yes. Wow. That is wild. total. So, so going to Richard War, what would you say was his main teaching? You know, for me, the 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 the, the thing that I got from Richard that that really sticks with me is is just that that looking at all things as being spiritual teachers. And in and, 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 and a book that he has that's my favorite, uh, it's called uh, Falling Upward, A Spiritual Life or uh, Spirituality for the Second Half of Life. And, and since I'm in the second half of life, I'm probably partial to that. Uh, but, you know, he speaks of the, in that book, he speaks of this whole idea of in the first half of life, we are we, we are concerned with identity and performance and achieving, um, you know, and overcoming challenges. But when we get to the second half of life, we're dealing with these paradoxes, right? We're, we're dealing with, you know, I may have taken a whole half of my life, if you will, being dedicated to a certain practice or principle. And, you know, in some cases, they may or may not have worked as I expected. But now I'm in a different stage of life and I'm not trying to achieve myself. I'm not trying to convince anybody or any of that, but I still need to have a spiritual path. And so in this book, he looks at that, I think, very well and, and, and looks at, you know, how do I gain spiritual guidance through falling down or, or failing or, or or those types of things that often, uh, at least in spirituality anyway, they're not they're not brought up. They they're not talked about that much in New Thought. And there's a kind of paradox there right now because I believe that in in our in our community in our spiritual communities, I mean, of course, we're across range and, and a, you know population wise and yet many um many in in our communities i see and feel as being in that second part of of life and are seeking to discover spirituality or discover to discover ourselves in a new way in a fresh way um where we can kind of really um open up to a, a divinity rather than like you talked about identity. It's like seeking that I, the, the big capital I identity yeah. rather than striving to find the immature identity in, in that first half of life. Um, yeah. And I think so, that's, you know, that's, if I had to look at Richard and capsulize him in, in a, in a word, it would be that is that, you know, uh, on this journey called life, how do we go about understanding and, and understanding heartbreaks and disappointment and our first love of life, which is to go and explore? How do we wrap that up into stepping stones to joy? Right? You know, there, there's a there's a saying that that uh, that's said that you know if you're never tested, it's it's going to be very difficult for you to give a testimony. Right. So if you have a testimony, that means you've been tested. And so when, when, when we look at how spirituality and mystic spirituality is supposed to be a working thing, that's a that, you know, like, like Jesus's things. I'm in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is I've had to I I have to have gone through something to to, to be able to look at it at a higher level. Yes. And that's one of the practical, I think that's one of the practical things that, that he brings up or he highlights at least that for you to understand, and especially as ministers and practitioners and, you know, counselors, or however people want to term themselves, you know, I know, you know, one thing in, in, uh, in practitioner training and ministerial training, you know, they always say, you will bet you 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 can counsel better from the place that you have been right so i i is i can't yes. talk about uh 
I don't know. I you know, for here's a, here's a real stark paradox. I can't talk about giving birth because I never gave birth, right? So I can give you a theoretical or textbook or any of this kind of stuff, but I cannot uh, give you categorical anything about giving birth. But if I said I can, I want to talk about running a marathon, just using some stark kind of examples. Well, I, I ran a couple of marathons, so I can give you some factual, insightful, uh, spiritual information about that. And I think what Rourke is trying to expose upon is that if we're going to be leaders, examples, whether it's lay leader or perceived established leader, we can't lead where we've never been. And so I love that with his center for action and contemplation, I mean, the word action is in there. And so for to encourage really taking action and learning more, the more action we take, the more we have that level of compassion. Like what you said about St. Francis of the Franciscan order, uh, poverty, travel, living in urban areas, you're going to really have a deeper understanding of where everyone is. And from there, come from a place of love and really support them yes, and support others on that journey. But contemplation too. So it's going into that mystical realm. It's going into that, that inner wisdom, into the oneness of spirit, but it's, it's, they're walking hand in hand is what I'm getting from that. Right. Well, cause one, one thing, one thing uh, uh, a rock speaks to, uh, you know, he talked about this whole thing in, in, um in modern theology it, it is revealing a strong uh tendency or a strong growth point if you will toward participation right we 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 now know we can no longer just be in the closet meditating and praying as opposed to you know the traditional way which is observation affirmation moralisms and 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 being a part of a group um that works in a in maybe in an ideal world, but when we're looking at what we're facing now with different environmental, different uh, societal, different humanistic issues, we can no longer take those kind of stance because you know th there's a there's a saying in the African American tradition that says uh, we may have come over here here being the United States in different boats but we're all on the same ship now. And, and, you know, we have to take care of this ship if we're going to survive. And that, and that's just not the earth ship, but that's the relationship ship and, and all of the other kinds of things that, that take place. And so that part, I think, um, you know, he talks about this whole thing of, of, getting to your true self. Um, and as far as I know, the only way to get to your true self is you got to go through something. So what advice do you think Richard Rohr would give? So I think a lot of us here on the planet right now are going through stuff. Yes. I mean, a lot of things are happening. I've noticed all around me, all these so souls are fleeing the planet. It's just really an impressive time where you just sit back and go, wow. How would Richard Rohr approach that? Or what would he say about going through stuff? Yeah, I, I think, you know, one of his cornerstones would be uh, it's an adventure. We have to prepare ourselves for a great adventure where, where, where we get to live this life that we were born to, to be in. Where we were, where, where, where when we look at uh, a lot of the Greek stories of Jason and the Argonauts or, or some of these kinds of Greek mythologies and stories, all of them deal with adventure. And, and the underlying premise of them is that to get to know not only life, but ourselves at a different level, at a level of freedom and danger and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. inquisitiveness that that awakens us to a to a, 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 a some unexpected happiness is 
pop up or 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 we stumble into some some radical grace uh as we're out there and begin to look at life in a different way and 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 gives us this sense or idea of um a deeper responsibility to things for ourselves for others for the planet Those words were just on the tip of my tongue as you were saying them, put a deeper sense of personal responsibility. Because it's feeling to me as if it, it he's um he's tuned, you know, he's really using St. Francis as a as his own um template. Uh, uh, if that's the correct word, I don't know, or if, as he's taken this teaching on to really immerse oneself in the difficulty rather than trying to run from it and to be a part of it and be the solution for it within it rather than standing apart from it and speaking to it from a, from a seemingly other place. Um, yeah. And it, for me, it feels as if he's saying, right, we're all mystics. We are each capable of having an effect in this world of form with the way that we are being within ourselves and then take action in the world. We can all do this. We have a responsibility for this, to be, to be this. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I think, you know, um, one of the things he, 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 he has a, in the opening of the book, he has a couple of statements, uh, one by Carl Jung and one by native American tradition, you know, by the one by Carl Jung, it says, you know, what is what is a normal goal for a young person becomes a neurotic hindrance in old age, right? And 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 then the, the Native American uh, aphorism is no wise person ever wanted to be younger. So you know one of the things is to shift it, right <laughs> to create this this wholeness, if you will, of, of looking at life in its totality and. You know, one of the things yeah. he, he I, well, the reason I like this book so much is that all of our literature, a lot of our uh, movies and stories are all geared toward the beginning of life, the younger part or the first half of life. There's very little, he suggests, and I, I, I would agree, there's very little stuff about uh how to be successful and continue to grow spiritually in the second half of life. And so we know just, just by when we look at, when we look at stories or books where there's a, a, a young person and an old person that's the teacher, we, we, we see the contrast, right? We, the young person is all yeah. energized and the old person is saying, all right, well, let's slow down. Let's think about this. Let's, you know, let's not rush into things. Um, because there's a wisdom that we've gained some wisdom after rushing into two or three things ourselves. And now we have a testimony, right? right for that test. <laughs> True. Yeah. And, I, and I'm reading here that, um, that Richard Rohr is one of the most popular spirituality authors and speakers in the world right now. Yes. Wow. Because he's 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 speaking, you know, for so long. And when we look at uh, the 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 self help movements and all the different movements that came out in the late eighties, early nineties, right? My opinion is that they were all geared towards self expression and self actualization, at the exclusion of dealing with reality. And, mm -hmm. and by that, I mean, if I'm looking at something and I'm saying to myself, I'm not proficient in a thing, uh, my positivity toward it or my attitude toward it is one component. But maybe a bigger component is, have I practiced that thing? Have I learned that thing? Have I, have right. I put myself in a position to be proficient in martial arts or or whatever it may be 
so that when I yeah. get to a situation where I have to use it, I don't need positivity. Positivity will help and it will right. elevate my level of practice or execution. But it's really about me experiencing the tenets of that thing, no matter what it is and how we activate it. And that's the gift that Wart brings yes. to me. So he's really, um, he bypassing the spiritual bypass here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we need that now more than ever, right? Uh, you know, we oh, look at, absolutely. we look at after COVID, we look at the, um, you know, the different studies coming out about the decline in uh, membership or attendance to all systems. Churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, all the numbers are down, right? And and I look at it when I especially when I look at Rock and this book that I really love about him, is that the people that are still going are the people in the second half of life. Those people in the first half of life are not attending as much because as he said here earlier, we was making a point that they are looking for practical ways to make this stuff happen because they have issues that they deal with, whether it's personal or environmental, that it, yes. You know, as Ernie said, we need to treat and move our feet. Yes. And so when these centers and, 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 and whatnot are not providing that kind of uh, environment, uh, or that kind of direction or leadership, however people want to term it, when that's not there, we go lacking. And I think when I look at the works of, of Richard, Richard is kind of building an evolution, if you will, as he said, you know, he's looking at this evolution of things, of, of how do we create systems and programs where we have action and contemplation that allows people as they evolve through life to find their place. I think that and makes a lot of sense to me. I think I, I really value that. Um, and as you said, you can have a deeper understanding and uh, more for for working with people. So for the folks in the second half of life, uh, so why do you, I know you've kind of said it, but for why do you think they're going to church more? Why are they the ones who are in the seats? Well, I think, you know, part of it is just training, right? We most of the people in the second half of life, definitely baby boomers and, and, and probably millennials, the next after the baby boomers, um, they grew up in a tradition where they had a family uh, practice that they went to the church. They went to the synagogue or the mosque or whatever. And so it became a training. I won't say habitual, but it became a cultural custom Right. That's what I was thinking. And yeah. and and there was there was an affinity to that because they, there is something that you get from that. That, it, you know, if you go to a place that has great music or somebody has great prayers or 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 great storytellers in those traditions. As a kid, you can be you know, you can be activated by that. And so as we come older now, we're still there. But a lot of us, you know, when our kids were born. And, and, and we didn't want to, you know, we was in a whole different era that, you know, we didn't want to force them uh, and that. And so it, it it created a whole nother thing. And and so now we're stuck with, you know, the younger people are a lot more freer, I think. And they're, and they're not stuck to a tradition that we were. And that that that's that's where our challenge now is going to come from. How do we begin to cross or merge the traditional um, orthodoxy or religious precepts with action? And when we can find that, now and, we got a uh, um, now I we got something better. So I and think I I think that I'm, I'm by you bringing him forwards, uh, 
Reverend, Reverend uh, Elzia, because I think for me, he's he's saying, right, there is no time anymore. We are all participating, all participatory in this life, and we all have a uh, a responsibility to um, to take that action or to be the action, and for mysticism to be a verb. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, because he, 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 there's a statement that he makes, um, you know, this whole idea of grace, right? He talks a lot about grace and grace, you know, if we recall, grace is this idea of good things happening to us. Um, a, it's a way of being in the world that we don't know why we don't know how it's just grace. And so that creates a different kind of uh, expectation or a different kind of way of engaging the world when you know everything that happened to you, some of it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just grace. Now, some people say in the right place at the right time or luck. I mean, you know, over over time, the, the, the spiritual ideas have taken on more uh, uh, popular terms. But that's what we're talking about. When you talk about luck, you're talking about grace. And I like that. that's what he brings forth. Yes, I was thinking about that uh, the other day because, again, all this um, weird stuff on the planet's happening. And one of my teachers called it the mystery. You know, it's like this is the mystery. You know, we don't really know why. But I actually like grace. I think that has a little more grace to it and a little... But, but the mystery, too, is just, again, uh, in Science of Mind and New Thought, a lot of times we say, you know, we caused it. You know, what did you do, you know, to make that happen or something? Instead of going, wow, you know, it's grace. It's yeah. it's the mystery. And it's really how we respond to it is is our, where our power is. Life is going to happen to all of us. Life just happens. But and but for us to be able to use these spiritual principles and practices and to pause and to breathe and to go within and to use that contemplative stuff and then from there to open um to follow guidance and to yeah. come from love so we can be loved no matter what bizarre stuff's going on in the world we can be loved right i like that and and you know that that's a, a great point um, cause when we talk about mystery, you know, uh, that sets the stage for that, that there's still a whole lot of stuff we don't know. No, no, we've, we've come a long, long way, right. Uh, in trying to understand life and all the things that go along with it, but it's still a mystery. Right. True. <laughs> it is. And, 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 and so we have that in the back of our mind, right? But at the same time, we know that there are certain quantum principles and scientific principles and all these other things that work categorically. It, yes. We know if we put fire to wood, if it ain't wet, it's going to burn, right? Uh, and, and then you have the whole idea where we look at principles, like there's the principle of electricity, but we can get electricity through hydro, turbine, fossil fuel, you know, uh, nuclear. There are many different ways to satisfy the principle of electricity. But the laws are the actual practical steps to make that happen varies. And we still come out with the exact same thing, electricity. Right. And we can use electricity. To, if we use it wisely, we can have light. And if not, we could be electrocuted. Yes. And I mean, just um, it's just that's where being mindful and learning. And I think that's what Richard Rohr and his wonderful um, there's his website. Uh, Reverend, or I'm going to call you Reverend Laura. So it has up here on the screen here. And he, he talks about, too, um, for his uh, school that is a, a place that people can really delve and go within. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because that's the key, right? It, it's like, we can have all these things happen to us, but if we don't contemplate them, which is different from meditation, right? We have to contemplate what has happened. Why did it happen? 
What was my part in it? Uh, and, yeah. and, and from that, we begin to get an understanding and a spirituality that moves beyond whatever plateau we are at that particular time. You know, and for me, and, and, this um, this fills the there was just a lag here. I'm gonna I'm just gonna carry on. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, on what you're saying, it feels to me as if this is um, this is integral theory. This is taking us from the net, you know, into that next. Uh, stage out of the me into the we where we are consciously making decisions and choices that involve everybody and rather than um, wanting yes we have to do our own personal healing and revealing and that's that's a huge part of it and then the next piece is we take this out we do something with it we do something productive um, there are more um uh, stops now happening than ever before that are socially aware. You know, social enterprise uh, businesses that are taking people's uh, problems into consideration as a part of their business model. And for me, this is the new kind of ministering. For me, this is like, yeah, we can minister with business in, in this way and we can, we can really be aware of what's going on and change it. Make be be a part of that change. Yes, from and, in and a practical you know, way. And the interesting thing you bring up for me there is this idea. You know, we 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 often hear and maybe talk about this whole idea of initiations, right? Or or you know, rites of passages, right? And and they all involve, and they have different names for them, but they all uh, stem from this leaving. A, a, a comfortable place going to an uncomfortable place and it is that uncomfortable place yeah. that awakens the consciousness you know right when you yeah. look at the prodigal son let's say the prodigal son is just that right he threw he thought he was ready to deal with life he went out there and found out i knew what i knew but there's a whole lot that i didn't know right and and that same story if i mean if we look at the story of adam and eve which you know, we know people have various interpretations of that, but but one of the interpretations is this whole idea of not dealing with the tree of knowledge because that in, that 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 awakened a consciousness, and so now yeah. with, with with those two things go together. That's a divine paradox right there. And so that's kind of the stuff that Rourke deals with. Yes. How do, we, how do we deal with this paradox of doing the thing that we're not supposed to do, but it's that thing that we're not supposed to do that gives us the consciousness that sends us to God. That's awesome. I, I love that. That's a great summary of that. It is, isn't it? So, yes. So what would you say? I know we've kind of talked about, but what would be some practical applications for our viewers here? on uh, New Thought Media Network and the archives. What, what would you say well, Richard Rohr would say? I think, you know, one of the things is, uh, uh, um, is, 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 is would be the question of looking at the life experiences, really looking at our life experiences and trying to figure out what we've learned from it. What, what do we know for sure? that we not something we've read. You know, my father used to always say, I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. Because now I can speak differently. Um, and then, you know, I, in, in this terms of contemplation is to begin to contemplate um, what is mine, you know, and we have a saying is what is mine to do, right? We, to be honest, like some some people's part may just to be a cheerleader. I, I don't have the wherewithal or whatever to, to be on the battlefield, so to speak, but I can supply food. I can supply fresh rations um, and begin to look at life in that way as to if, if we're really serious about uh, 
making a better world. And, and as we say, a world that works for everyone, a world that works for everything. And that now, now we bring the animals and the plants and everything in there. I need to find what's mine to do. The, the the water the water that causes the plants to grow never gets mad at the sun because it dries it all up. It understands the process, and that's one of Rourke's things. He understands process, and that life is process, and that the only way to understand the whole is to understand the process. So that would be the second thing, and I think a third thing would be um, to begin to look at. Uh, and this is a tough one. You know, how do we how do we pass this information on? How do we how do we uh, pass it to those who are our contemporaries and those that may be younger than us? You know, there is a there is a poem that I learned when I was in college called I'd rather see a sermon. And I'm and I'm suggesting that that is the way we do it. And it goes, I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. I'd rather one walk with me than just show the way. The eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. And so that's what we have to, we have to begin to live this stuff. We have to begin to, to, to create a, a, a world where we are trying to actualize these principles and then we take from Richard Rourke's understanding that we're going to make mistakes. We're going to find ourselves in situations that we didn't even think we could ever find ourselves in. But then how do we turn that into a spiritual lesson? Because yes. that is, the, that is the, the, the cycle of life. And that's what that's where the real work comes in. And I love I love what you've just said of how to turn it into a spiritual lesson because it it's so easy to want to wriggle out of different circumstances and situations without actually looking at the you know that that unseen you know getting into that mystical place and and having that hard conversation with ourselves yes. to get clear on what it is you know that piece of healing that piece of revealing that understanding that compassion that reverend kath uh, is talking about to get to that place of compassion um it's really beautiful and i love it that he um he's a franciscan master of theology and um he's a franciscan priest and it just feels so many so many kind of tentacles that really cross over into new thought yeah Yes. In a in a deeper or a different way, a different way, the same. And and he's kind of considered a new thought Christian, if you will, right? Because of because right, you know, we we often either go to uh the spiritual bypass, but we go to it only on the positive side. We don't talk that much about the other side, which is if we make yes. a mistake to condemn ourselves and to and and then go into another spiral, right? And it is the it is the divine paradox from from, from those two things that creates the real person in the middle, and that's what we're looking for now. We we have so many right. people that are propped up. What we need now is uh, something totally different. No, I I love that, and I love what you said. Is what Authentic. is mine to do to learn from what's going on, and and. Go ahead. I think Laura was talking about being authentic. Yeah. So that, that's, that, that, that's really being authentic with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And once we do that, um, we we can then begin to uh, create this life that works for everyone. Because I don't judge you because you fell down. I fell down too. Uh, and I know what it takes to get over that and to get back up. And so now we begin to operate from those kind of premises, not some superiority judgment, but from a compassion, grace standpoint that allows us to create an arm and a hug for everybody, no matter what the situation, whether it's a hug of celebration, a hug of, of upliftment, or just a pure hug of joy. To help us fall upward. Yes. Yes. 
Beautiful. It really is. It's it's so meaningful and so pa powerful. And I I think one of the um, things that I just absolutely love is that he's still here and he's doing this work and that we can really tap into him and watch him and learn yeah. real, real time right now. Yeah, because I have intention to go down to his center. I, I just got to make the, make the moment. Right. And, and so we're so grateful that you Fantastic. were here. To present. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yes. And, and, and these are these are the these are the type of conversations that we have to, I believe, have because we have to become active in this and we have to begin to 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 be to be the lesson, to be the leader, not just be a talking head and teach it. We have to start having our own failures and our own successes and 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 be an example to others of how you grow no matter what the situation is you know because plants grow plants grow whether there's sun or no sun right they still grow it yeah so thank you for having wow. me wow thank I, you so I much look forward to coming back thank uh, you for being here, here. No, we really appreciate yes. it. I know our yes, viewers really appreciate stick. it too. <laughs> Definitely. Have a blessed day. Hi. Thank you. Um, thank you. And you. Thank you so much. That was amazing. And uh, was. For, for those of you that are watching now, yes. Wow. Reverend Kathy, wasn't that just so, such a blessing and a treat to have um, – Reverend Elzia here today talking on Richard Raw. Yes, absolutely, Laura. No, I really appreciate it. And I just loved, I mean, I just felt going deeper, just listening to it, you know. And again, a lot of times, so we can use everything that happens in our life as a gift and a lesson, but also we can use it as an opportunity for us to to learn more about who we are. I loved your word authentic. We can accept who we are, but then what is ours to do? Because I really believe that each one yeah. of us has some kind of life lesson that comes to us our way and that we can use that like for our, it doesn't have to be a ministry, but for how we show up for our higher purpose in life and that we can really, you know, uplift and change the world in a positive way. Um, and I, I love how you do have the Science Mind archives on the screen right now. So if people want to learn more, we have all under sciencemindarchives.com. You know, feel free to donate to the archive so we can continue to preserve, protect, and present this life-transforming wisdom of new thought. You know, we are here for you. And there's outrageous resources on that website for you to delve in and to learn more and to go deeper into your own personal mystic. And uh, just grateful that, and also all the Wisdom of the Mystic shows under free wisdom, you find Wisdom of the Mystics and you can watch our past shows too, which is really a wonderful thing. So we're grateful. And what about you, Laura? What That's was fantastic. kind of like your and yes, your web kind... your website is amazing. I love your website. Um, <laughs> I love I love the website and everything that it has. You know, I'm delving in more and more and and reading things and learning and and it's so great what you are doing, serving and presenting the work of Ernest Holmes and keeping it uh, keeping the spirit of it absolutely alive, present. Um. And so, yes, check out the, the science of mind and of course, New Thought Media Network. We have a new website too, which is uh, which is great. Reverend Robert working on the website, updating it, um, creating space to show the shows and the broadcasts and all of the different things that we do here. And you can find the programming, and of course, like us on YouTube. And they, then you'll be notified daily with what's coming up. We have three prayers a day on the network. So uh, just uh, go to YouTube and subscribe and you can find out more about the wonderful programming here on New Thought Media Network. 
And I've also popped up the donate button for the network. If you feel that you love the network and all that it's doing, then yes, donate in and be a part of the conscience of the vision for bringing these teachings, keeping these teachings in people's minds and hearts um, to remind us of who we are as love, just as uh, Rev Reverend Elzia has done today with the sticks. No, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. New Thought Media Network has such a variety of shows. And so just go and scroll through, I mean, whatever wisdom you may need. If you're going through a, a challenge that you're in the mystery, go to New Thought Media Network, and I'm certain the perfect show will pop up for you that will speak to your, your soul. Yeah. I mean, like, Laura's cosmic prayer. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can use these spiritual tools to truly touch, teach, touch, and transform our lives. It's very powerful. And, and we're grateful. Oh, we're in I spiritual community. When we come together, it's so powerful to love and support each other, too. So we're grateful you're here. Yes. Yes. Thank you for being here today. And it was a great broadcast. And we will be back here in the next uh, couple of weeks. And stay tuned in the network. There'll be more programming after I've left this show now. So have an amazing rest of your day wherever you are on this planet. Thank you so much. Take good care. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.